got a pretty interesting video here. This is called Why Are Manga Authors Anonymous? Uh, my opinion, if I was a mangaka, any type of mangaka, that like fame and celebrity status doesn't like give you privacy. So a lot of people probably wants to, you know, stay anonymous so that they can separate work from life and not have crazy people just like stalking them. Let's go. In 2014, a 36 year old man by the name of Hirofumi Watanabe was sentenced to four and a half years in prison. This is interesting. I'm not sure if he's just nervous and this is like a mechanism of like dealing with the anxiousness, but he's just like smiling the entire time. There's like moments of when he, he's smiling and like serious and smiling and serious. Look. Old man by the name smiling, of smiling. Watanabe. Serious was sentenced to four and a smiling, smiling. half years in prison. Hmm. This man had been the sole culprit in an investigation that had been going on for two years. Criminals are pursued every day, but what stuck out about this case in particular was Watanabe's fixation on one individual, Whoa. Tadatoshi Fujimaki. Ah. Okay, so this guy was a stalker. Just some oceanical behavior happening. The author of the iconic sports manga, Kuroko Basketball. Basketball. Okay. For two years, Watanabe would conduct a string of crimes that all revolved around Fujimaki. The threatening fuck? business owners that dared to carry any media pertaining to Kuroko's basketball. Disrupting events that included the series in any Insane. And this is the reason why I know I'm a nobody. Even if I get 100k million subs, YouTubers, we are nothing. But there are fan meetups and stuff that, you know, people do. I would never open myself up to anything like that. It's scary. 99.9% .9 of people are going to be normal. They're going to be perfectly fine. All it takes is that one fucking freak to ruin everything. This person went around. I don't know why Kuroko's No Basket did to him personally. Maybe he fucking hates basketball. No, it's got to be specific about that series. Something about that series pissed him off so much. He made it his life mission to just stalk and abuse him. Anyway, and even targeting locations from Fujimaki's past, mailing a letter to his old high school containing a strange, potentially poisonous white powder, what as well fuck? as leaving a bottle of toxic hydrogen sulfide in the gymnasium of Fujimaki's old university. Bro, Attached that's crazy. That, that, okay, yeah, lock him up. This is a mentally ill person. That's absolutely insane. Like, I'm not saying do it to the author. Of course not. That's crazy. But this person is going to wherever the author is affiliated with, old high schools, other things, and then he's trying to cause those people harm. Harm across anybody is bad, but like this person is trying to do damage that way. That's insanity. To it, a note that simply read, I hate. Fujimaki. Why? What did he do to you? Once the authorities were finally able to detain Watanabe, he was asked why he had such a fixation on Fujimaki, and Watanabe answered, Kuroko no go basket was so mid. <laughs> it's an unrealistic basketball sport. It is a disrespect to basketball. That's why I did it. That he was jealous of the author's incredible success. Oh. There it is. I wonder if this is also a mangaka? It's interesting how he picks this specific person to, you know, be jealous of. Is this a person in the industry? And that Fujimaki had lived a blessed life, whereas he had never experienced anyone's love. If I okay, keep somehow going. managed to harass and depress him, I could drag him into my journey. That's crazy, man. Yeah, this is not jealousy. Envy and jealousy is very different. Most people think that they're the same thing, but envy is what happens when you, have, when you don't have something and the other person does have it and you're envious of that person. Jealousy is if you already used to have that success, but now someone else is having it instead of you. It's, it's about like, did you originally have it and does someone else have more of it or taken it from you kind of deal? I think that's the distinction between envy and jealousy. I don't know who this person is. Like, why did he pick this specific mangaka? There's so many mangakas that are successful, but specifically Kuroko Basketball. What is the obsession here? And this is such a loser's mindset, right? Like, I've never experienced love. I've never been successful at anything, and I need to drag someone that's doing well 
down with me because misery loves company. If I can't have it, no one else can. And this is the actual mindset of depressed losers, mentally ill, pathetic people who have no self-accountability, who's never worked on themselves to improve themselves, often thinks of them as victims of society and systemic issues. And even if there is some truth in how, you know, at a greater scale, the world does seem rigged against you, people will always blame everything but themselves for their failure. So why are manga authors anonymous? Hmm, I, you know, I can't really seem to put my finger on it. It's yeah, just, great intro. Oh man, it's just such a conundrum. If you follow anime or manga, you've probably noticed a trend by now that many manga authors tend to be pretty adamant about hiding their face and maintaining mm. at least some level of anonymity. I yeah, I always noticed that, you know, One Piece, uh, Oda, Eichiro Oda, he never has like real modern pictures that's been shown. It's always like very, very old pictures, right? And I'm sure they're, they kind of plays into the whole like privacy anonymous stuff, even though, you know, his name is out there. He's such a huge figure. But I also noticed like a lot of other manga because they also go by pen names and their profile pictures are always never showing their real identity as they should. They should protect themselves. I mean, even an author as huge as Eichiro Oda, the creator of One Piece, will still usually hide his face when he's doing yep. on-screen interviews. Heck, typically these authors won't even represent themselves with their own faces, instead opting to have their identities associated with these silly little self-made avatars. It's which, cute. by the way, these are all really adorable, and I, I they really are. need to do a video on these at some point. After seeing what happened to the author of Kuroko's Basketball, it becomes pretty evident why an author might be adamant about staying anonymous for their own protection from yep. unhinged individuals. In this, let's just say, interesting era of social media, manga authors are no strangers to online harassment. And there's many examples. Kohei Horikoshi, the author of My Hero MHA. Academia, once had fans reach out and warn him when a crazed social media user threatened to visit his house. <laughs> Yeah, the MHA fandom is quite something else, huh? Like, I remember, I never watched it or read it, but I remember Twitter threads, dramas happening, subreddit posts, just unhinged people making death threats at the author due to shipping. I don't even know, like, like just imaginary shipping between characters in the show. It's like, how serious could anime be? Very serious. There's a lot of mentally ill people who cannot distinguish fiction from reality. And their entire identity is revolving around these works of fiction. If something challenges their status quo, something that they perceive as to be real, and suddenly that gets shattered, they lash out. They don't know how to behave in real world society. That's why a lot of you know, people that watch anime and read manga, there's a negative stereotype, a stigma associated with people, right? Reclusives, social outcasts losers, right? That is the common stereotype that was propagated a long time ago when anime wasn't as, you know, mainstream as it is now. Even giving a specific date when they were planning to show up. Hajime Isayama, the creator of Attack on Titan, once had over a thousand death threats sent to him on his personal blog in 2013. Jesus. And mind you, this was way before the series' controversial ending. And speaking of controversial endings, Gege Akutami. Oh my god. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen? God, this poor man. I have so much sympathy for this guy. The amount of backlash, vitriol, and threats he gets anytime he does well anything would break a weaker person. It's actually been speculated that this is one of the reasons why he decided to end JJK. <laughs> really? He got tired of his own monkeys. Gege turned into Geto near the end. He said, you know what? Y'all really are monkeys. Geta wasn't wrong. <laughs> I'm just gonna end this shit. Fuck every one of you. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, uh, who knows, right? People are theorizing, but it is really sad when you have people trying to create art. Then you have fans who are supposed to be fans who enjoy, appreciate the work, who then turn on the creators and they just go rogue. And it's, it's just crazy.
when he did, not only for his physical health, but for his mental health as well. And if this is true, I really wouldn't blame him. I can't imagine how anyone would be able to keep their brain in a creative state of mind when they're constantly being hounded like this. Mm -hmm. But that also brings us back to the advantage of anonymity and that it can actually help soften the blow of harsh criticism like that. Absolutely right. The more that you have your appearances shown, right? People are very judgmental creatures that looks at the outward appearance first before judging anything internally. That's just how monkeys we primates evolved as, right? So if you have your appearances shown, people will always make fun of you. Even me saying bald, bald, right? That is a form of that. Now, there is some layers of comedy, which is, you know, grounded and not so serious, you know, depictions like this. But people will always judge you. And if you have your facial features out, especially girls, right? Like, oh, she's mid, fat, blah, 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 elbows too pointy. Like, all these different things they can, you know, criticize and judge you. They're not even, like, here to criticize your work. They're just here to just insult you based on your appearance. So the more that you can, you know, obscure all of that, the better it is. It's similar to VTubers too, right? VTubers intentionally choose a 3D rig to represent themselves with a different persona because the nature of parasocial relationships online, it leads to people stalking and even if you are a vtuber people will still fucking find a way to stalk you if you accidentally slip up right in the world of just online entertainment and with so many anonymous interactions it's very smart to hide as much information as possible so that you protect yourself first and foremost and focus on the content focus on the content leave out that personal shit aside this. As someone who makes YouTube videos, I myself get quite a few uh, not so nice comments. Yeah, and you are an anonymous person, right? You don't show your face in these videos and probably smart. Probably also the reason why a lot of those rage bait channels, I'm not saying that this channel is like that, but most rage bait channels, they never show their face because they know exactly what's going to happen if they do. People are going to start insulting them based on the appearances because of the rage bait, right? Myself included, right? Like, I get constant, you know, you know, remarks about my appearance, my race, blah, 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 all these kind of things. But I have a pretty thick skin where I can just separate that from the content. I just block and move on. I just laugh at the monkeys and move on. Because the more you cry about it, right? There's a line from a movie called Old Boy where it says, laugh, and the entire world will laugh with you. Cry, and you'll cry alone. Never cry about your problems. There is a time and place to have outlets to express your discontent and stress relief, but no one cares about that. People just want to be entertained. They don't care that you're being insulted. The more that you focus on the content the, and you continue being successful, as in get more views, growth, the more people are happy. And if you're laughing, everything will be fine. The moment that you start victimizing yourself and start crying, saying that people are being mean, People tune out because they cannot empathize with someone that is doing a living off of, let's say, watching anime or doing content creation. People are here to be entertained after coming back from a hard days of work or a form of escapism because shitty things are happening in their life. Nothing wrong with that. But if you bring in your personal problems and baggage and kind of like put that shit out there to the audience who are here to be entertained, even if they're fans and some of them will be loyal and support you no matter what. A lot of people will tune out and say, I don't care. I'm here for the content content, man. Entertain me. And it's, I'm not saying this is a good or bad thing. I'm just saying like, this is the way that I see, you know, content creation, online entertainment. And this is probably the best way to kind of like navigate that, navigate through that in order to like protect your mental health. I don't mind constructive criticism or when people point out mistakes that I might make, but some of these very clearly do exist just to make me feel bad. But yep. I found it surprisingly easy to brush these off because they're basically coming from strangers that don't even know me. Yep. And the funnier thing is, and this is, I realized this on TikTok, all of these stupid kids, you know, making death threats or just saying racist shit or just making hateful comments. When you click onto their profile, you realize that they're an actual 13-year-old kid. You read the negative engagements online from the context of your own voice. And because you're contextualizing this from like a reasonable functioning member of society's perspective, suddenly these comments could mean half more weight to you. But once you realize that these are actually dumb 13-year-old kids talking about shit they don't have no clue about, then you realize, 
why am I getting heated over this? Who cares? That's why I always call people monkeys, right? I'm also a monkey. And the more that I separate this like, level of expectation for my audience, the more that I'm able to kind of like protect myself and not take anything seriously, focus on the content and having fun rather than crying about harassment online. They're essentially meaningless. And this is how I imagine that many manga authors feel as well. It's just a lot easier to disregard stuff like this when you're able to separate your work from your personal exactly. life. Something that internet personas and anonymity allows you to do. And thus makes actually working and being creative a lot easier and manageable. Exactly. It also just allows for a lot more freedom. You'll feel more inclined to write about whatever you want when yeah, you don't, you're not, you're not going to be thinking about hate threads and comments criticizing your work and how the story should be. You block that shit out. You are the author. You are the one with the creative vision. And the more you can focus on that rather than think about what people are saying about this story arc, better the art's probably going to be. When you're not out in the spotlight and letting personal fame overshadow the actual work you put on paper. When you write with a persona, you're at least somewhat free of all prejudice and preconceptions. For example, look at Full Metal Alchemist author Hiromu Arakawa. Very or cute. should I say- Is that a cow eating a steak? Is this cannibalism? How does this work? Say Hiromi Arakawa. When Arakawa started out as a manga author, she knew that she wanted to write shonen stories for young boys. However, in the manga industry, when you're ah right, 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 hiding your identity, your gender, so that the target audience will still watch your content. I'm sure once people realize that oh, this popular series is actually by a female creator. Some people are truly ignorant and misogynistic where they'll be like, no, I'm not going to try it because it's by, done by a woman. So this is like a way of kind of like hiding that and overcoming that, you know, prejudice. When you're a female, you're typically expected to write shoujo, manga for young girls. Because of this, she decided to adopt a more masculine name in Hiromu so that any young boys who saw her manga would I give see. it a chance without judging it based on her gender. It's and look what happened. It's one of the best things to ever happen, right? FMA Brotherhood, the anime at least, is just one of the greatest animes ever, right? In some cases, authors even use pen names to indicate a collaboration. One of the most famous examples of this being Fujiko Fujio, the pen name for Hiroshi Fujimoto and Moto Abiko, the okay. authors of Doraemon. I think in the entertainment industry, whether it's manga, movies, or video games, people prefer to look at one individual responsible for creating a piece of work. Clearly, it's not that simple. It's like a title. It's like a title or a position that many people adopt. But people typically appreciate simplicity, and it's a lot easier to just say Fujiko Fujio as opposed to Hiroshi Fujimoto and Mato Abiko. So I'd say that that was pretty smart on their end, and probably a lot easier for their manga publisher. And while we're on the topic of manga publishers, they benefit from all of this as well. For one, when a manga author isn't a well-established pop culture personality, you don't really need to spend a ton of money on PR. That is, unless the author does something you know Canceled. really really bad oh yeah y'all remember this shit he got away with it too right Ugh, it's just like how are you gonna be diddling bro this is such a legendary work and i'm sure a lot of people it's like your childhood heroes you know all the people that you you know like idolized and looked up to <laughs> the news comes out that they diddle it and you're like, oh man, not you too, bro. This is why you should never idolize anybody. You should also learn to separate the art and the artist. Rooney Kenshin, I think, still is amazing, right? If people didn't know about this guy's drama, people still love this shit. Suddenly, because of what happened to him, you're going to think that this show is bad or this manga is bad? No, right? It's obviously that bias that you have because you're connecting the work with the creator which is fair it's it makes a lot of sense but being able to kind of like separate that i think is a bit healthier and another example of never meet your idols never meet your heroes because you only see one side of them when they're at their best and they're kind of showing you a very crafted image of themselves you have no clue what they're like you know behind the scenes you have no idea they are as a person, their world values. You're simply being shown again 
this small perspective through a window that is curated just for you. So never, ever idolize your heroes. We're all just irrational monkeys at the end of the day and separate the art from the artist and destroys their reputation. But even then, issues like these are probably a lot easier to mitigate or even sweep under the rug if your author... The hell's Bastard Bible? What is this? Bastard Bible? Sweep under the rug if your author isn't in the public eye in a substantial way, for better or worse. But that's a topic for another day. You know, let, let's... let's, let's yeah, I mean, obviously, the more recognized you are, the more you're going to get away with stuff. That's just life. It's not specific to the manga industry. Anyone with enough money, power, influence can obviously be treated differently in the, you know, the court of law. Let's, let's move on from that. All you need to know is that anonymity has its advantages, and it's entirely logical to approach making manga this way. However, that's not to say that there aren't exceptions. One of the best examples of this being Hirohiko Araki, the author JoJo's. of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. He is no stranger to the camera, and honestly, I can't help but feel like he probably enjoys the attention to some- Yeah, I mean, even though I haven't seen JoJo's and like all I know of it is through memes and clips, I have seen random like videos kind of like showing this guy. A lot of people just kind of glaze how old he is, yet how young he looks. People make the comparison of like, oh, is he a vampire like Dio or some shit? Uh, what else is there? He has crazy like poses. He just seems to understand social media and how to relate to people. Some degree. I mean, just look at the way he poses in yes. so many of these photos. And He's a good looking guy, right? Great looking guy, looks humorous, funny, the poses are cool, his, you know, his, his work is a legend. Who wouldn't love this guy? He like always has a suit or some nice clothes on. Pretty fitting that the author of one of the flashiest mangas of all time also knows how to look good on camera. Then of course you have Ken Akamatsu, the author of Love Hina, who, and I kid you not, is actually a politician and- What? The fuck? We recently had the whole Love Hina uh, author. Remember that website that was getting um, Visa and MasterCard pulled out due to fan service that did not match the Western ideology? That was this guy as well, right? Really a politician and serves on the Japanese House of Counselors. <laughs> I gotta say, that's a pretty big leap from writing harem manga. So yes, the degree to which a manga author seeks out their anonymity certainly varies, and while there are exceptions, it's still very common across the industry, for good reasons as we've seen. However, while there are many benefits, I also feel like a big reason for this is because of Japan's culture in general. Okay. Uh, what do we know about Japanese culture? Polite. Very well-mannered. Um, respects the elders. More of a collectivist mindset of respecting elders and not really getting out of line and staying in place, which has its pros and cons. Japan is a nation where privacy is seen with great value. A lot of people just want to go about their business. <laughs> that's right, work. That's right. <laughs> 25 hour days. That's right. Business without fuss or hassle. And this is probably how many of these manga authors feel as well. Of course, the ludicrous amounts of money they make probably mean that they have an at least somewhat higher standard of living than most. But that doesn't change that many of them are just regular people going about their days, mm. trying to live their lives as well as they can without. That's right. No matter how much success and fame, you know, gets to somebody like they're still people at the end of the day. And there's also the stereotype associated with mangakas for being eccentric and a little bit maybe on the spectrum, right? Don't understand social cues, maybe. Maybe they're introverts and don't know how to communicate properly. The anonymous interface probably kind of helps with that regard. Without disruptions. I mean, how would you feel if anytime you went to the grocery store, someone recognized you? I can imagine that it would be a nightmare for anyone who has even a little bit of social anxiety. And that's not even taking into account that many of these authors have families, spouses. That's right, right? Like the intro section with the Kuroko basketball guy, right? He could have went after his family, right? Loved ones. It's, it's more, I don't want to say li family is liability, but there are potential targets. Children, parents, you name it. Fame is something that can easily affect not only you, but all of those around you as well. 
And that's kind of scary to think about. Drawing manga is just something that these people enjoy doing, and I imagine that many of them got into it without fully coming to terms with just how much this passion was going to completely change their lives, not only for the better, but the worse as well. When Tadatoshi Fujimaki was busy writing the drafts for what would eventually become Kuroko's Basketball, the only thing he was probably thinking about was trying to make his manga as good as he possibly could. Yeah. He probably wasn't thinking that someday some crazed lunatic was going to use his creation to threaten others. I mean... Yeah, that's the thing, right? It all begins with just passion and just love for something. You don't worry about downstream effects. I do think about that. <laughs> I, I genuinely do. Because I... Ever since Oshinoko, not, not even before Oshinoko, this is happening long, long time ago too because I'm from South Korea and the K-pop idol industry and the insane medicines and stalkers and suicides that happen from the expectations and the depressions that comes from, you know, idols and stuff. It's just entertainment industry was always so fucked. So I always thought to myself, you know, be as anonymous as possible. Obviously, we have the name Kaka TV and I show my face, but if I'm not giving you my fucking full name... No, no nothing. No P.O. Box, no fan meetups. Nope, you can just uh, enjoy the reactions and we can have fun. How could he? But that's exactly what happened. And it's sad to think about that something like manga, a thing created solely to entertain and make people happy, can be twisted into something that others use to hurt or demean others. Yeah, and... This problem I don't think is specific to manga, right? This just is life in a nutshell with any sort of uh, any sort of like idolization or putting people on a pedestal just becomes targets, right? Others with, including the one who made it. I think what I'm trying to get at here is that manga authors aren't their manga. They're not deities, they're not unknowable creatures that are above everyone else. They're That's right, they're just regular people who happens to have a talent to create arts that you enjoy. And the moments that you can understand that we are all just people at the end of the day, maybe the more less unhinged people become, but no, I don't think so. I don't think the mentally ill could ever comprehend that. It's already too late for that. People. It's so easy to lose yourself in fame and the endless Ouroboros of negativity that the internet and society create. Some yep. people really do just want to watch everything around them burn and collapse and drag you down with them yep. into that inferno. And there's nothing you can do about it. These people will always exist. And the more that you become depressed and worried about it, the less, you know, you're not going to have faith in society. It makes it seem like I have no faith in society. Uh, I think that for the most part, many, many people are very reasonable people. It's just, again, it's just a very small percentage that ruins it for everyone else. And the more you are realistic about this, the more you can be pragmatic in being proactive against crazy shit like this happening. And anonymity is something that these authors use to allow themselves to live a normal life with the ones that they hold the closest. Yep. Free from pressure and free from fear. Smart. Thank you. I think that's the video from Mr. Kitsune Anime. That was a very interesting video. I love these kind of anime related videos, not just like anime like like episode reviews and reactions and stuff like that, but just like just anime industry, different things happening, why things are the way they are, right? We've been watching a lot of production value and stuff, learning more about, you know, <laughs> the different committees and blah blah blah, but stuff like this is also very interesting, but please go check out Mr. Kitsune Anime. Here's the guy's channel. Please go like the video if you did, and I'll see you next time.